I've had this little Chinese solar light outside um, for a while now. It's been out several months and it's weathering well. There's no sign of water ingress or that. However, it doesn't last very long at night. And part of the reason for that is that it's using quite a low value of inductor, which results in a very high current. And I've just measured the current at about 1.2 volts and it comes in about 60 milliamps, which is really quite high. So generally speaking with these, if you change the inductor size, you can reduce the current. And for some odd reason, the higher the inductor goes, like for instance, the little Poundlandy type lights like these tend to use a 470 microhenry inductor, which is about 10 times the value of this one and they run the output at much lower level. It, it just seems to be the higher the value of inductor, the lower the current. So I dug up the data sheet for this online, and the data sheet, it appears, was just a JPEG uh, that I could find for this, because this particular chip is the uh, 5252F. Um, there are many variants in this. And uh, it's, a, it's a very simple four-pin chip. Uh, there are so many different numbers, versions of this. I'm not sure if they're, they're just uh, everybody makes their own version as such or if they're coming from one source rebadged, but I think probably it's from different uh, suppliers. And they're very simple. They're, they're basically, it's the inductor, the chip, the LED, the uh, rechargeable cell and the solar panel, and it's really designed for solar lights. So if you look at this chart, it, it says the 47 microhenny is the lowest inductor they actually put in their chart, and it says 50 milliamps. Now, if I go up to 470 microhenny, which is actually off the scale here, it's going to be low. It's going to be something like 5 milliamps, I'd guess. Um, so I'm going to see what else other inductors I can find in other lights uh, to put into this, with the aim to reduce the current and make it last a lot longer. So let's um, open the little Poundland light, and I kind of know that because these use the tiny little button cell, they are aiming to make it last as long as possible on such a small capacity cell and a small solar panel. So that, that will almost certainly be a 470 microhenry um, inductor. The value of the inductor is red in the same way as a resistor, but in microhenries. In the case of this one, it's yellow, violet, black, and then silver, I think the last band is, which is the tolerance. So that means 4, 7, and the multiplier, which there's zero multipliers, so it's just 47 ohm, uh, 47 microhenry, with a tolerance probably with a silver band of 10%. So let's pop this circuit board out here and take a look at the inductor. The inductor is very small but readable and it is a 470 microhenry inductor. It's yellow, violet, brown, which is uh, 47 and then 10, which is 470. And it's got a gold band look of it, which is 10% tolerance. So let's uh, see what other options I've got. This uh, solar light is a slightly larger cell. It's got a slightly larger um, um, nickel metal hydride cell too. So I'm going to pop this one open and see what the inductor is. And the inductor here is, well, the first band is white. Uh, I'm just going to look at this through a little magnifying glass. It looks like white, white, brown, black. Hmm. So that would be a 91 microhenries. Nah, to be honest, I said... I'm not 100% sure. I want this to... This doesn't have to be very bright, so I might actually stick the inductor out of this uh, little Poundland light in it just to see how bright it is. So I'm going to desolder the original inductor. And it's quite wide, uh, so I'm going to put some wires in to extend uh, so I can actually tack the other inductors across an experiment. So let's uh, wet the solder a little bit with some fresh lead-based solder, full of lead-based goodness. So I'm just going to flow the solder on these briefly. I'm probably going to grab that inductor with the pliers, which I've just suddenly rediscovered. And I'm going to heat a solder joint while I pull one of the wires here. Oops, he completely misses it. It's actually a wee bit tight in there. No, I've missed it again. 
possibly because I think I've got wax all over the end of these due to earlier experiments. So I'm going to heat that and pull, so I've pulled the lead out. Uh, I'm going to keep that inductor though, it's quite a useful one for experimenting with another application. So I'm going to heat that solder joint and pop the inductor out completely. Then I'm going to clean those solder pads with desoldering wick. Ready for a new inductor. Actually ready for some extension wires. Okay. Now we need a little bit of wire. There's a bit of wire with a resistor tacked on it from a previous experiment. So I'm going to get a pair of snips. Strip that. Strip it and then slide the sleeving up a little bit if I can. Save stripping the other end. And I'm going to form this into a sort of wide U shape and then put it into the circuit board. Now this might look like I'm just putting a shorting link in, which is exactly what I'm doing, but I'm not going to be using it as a shorting link. Technically speaking, that would be of an inductor of sorts, but I'm not sure the chip would be very happy with a wire link. I don't think the LED would light at all. So the reason I'm putting this uh, in as just one big wire link is because it's easier to put it in as a link like that and then cut it in the middle. So I cut it in the middle, and that gives me two wires coming out for attaching other uh, values to now. I'm going to try and strip this, but yes, as predictably, yeah, I kind of guessed that was going to happen. I've pulled the sleeving right off it, so I'm just going to just thread that sleeve back on now, cropped it down in size a bit. And the same will probably happen on the other side if I'm not too careful. Yeah, that's all right. So now I've got my... Um, two wires which I'm going to tack another inductor across. So let's steal the inductor out of the little Poundland lamp. Once again I'm going to grip the lead and then desolder it. And the other side. Well that's not coming out so easy. So there's my little inductor. I'm going to just place that. I'm just going to tin the leads, actually. Tin the leads in here as well. This is, um, if the leads are very short and you spend too long with the solder, it'll actually, the heat will transfer along the copper and it'll melt the solder joints at the other end. So you have to be a wee bit careful about this. I'm going to just tin these leads with a fresh lead-based solder. Bit of cooling action from from blowing on it, and I'll just tack this across. So that's one end of the inductor on. Now comes the other end. Bit ugly, but that's all right. So that's the new inductor in circuit. Not a pretty arrangement. I'll just fold this out the way it makes sure it doesn't touch anything else. And then I shall power that up from an external power supply and uh, I shall cover the solar panel and we'll see how much current it draws. So the LEDs are lit a lot dimmer now, but they're still lit nonetheless. Oh, the current has dropped down to about 4 or 5 milliamps. Maybe that's just a little bit too low. Maybe I should be looking for other... Because um, that really isn't bright at all. Uh, maybe I should be looking for some another inductor. Now, what if I put the other one in from the, the other light? Let's do that and see how that looks. So this one is blobbed in with glue. Pretty. That's quite an odd value to see. So I'm going to uh, desolder that. This one I see just as a little cob chip in the back of it. 
These are very cheap generic lights, these ones. Still work very well. Oh. So that's that inductor popped out. It's not an odd value, that really. 91 micro Henry's. I'm just I'm milling over the resistor colour code in my head because uh, I rarely get uh, resistors or inductors with the white band on them, so it's quite unusual. I just wanted to make sure I had the right value there. In case I'd been making a dick of myself by quoting the wrong value, but I believe white is 9. When I was young, uh, I learnt the resistor colour code with the uh, sentence Billy Brown, Billy Brown revives in your gin but values good whisky. And the whole point of that was it was the colours. So Billy would be black, Brown would be brown, revives would be red. And it just it was the letters um, in sequence starting from zero. Um, uh, there are other versions of that um, thing which I won't go into because some of them are very, very rude. Oh well, what the heck, I will. Uh, the rudest I know is uh, black boys ride our young girls but virgins go without or wanking and it's just, they're so inappropriate but ironically because it's so rude it's actually easier to remember. The Billy Brown revives in your gin but values good whiskey one was hard to remember. So uh, yeah, inevitably people have come up with these rude ones. The other version of that is big boys ride our young girls, but ironically, the ethnically incorrect one, the uh, black boys ride our young girls, starts with the colour black, which is a good reminder that that is uh, the first uh, colour. Yes, has this gone the wrong direction, this video? Not to worry. It started off harmless with solar lights, now it's gone into profanity and uh, sort of elements of racism, but that's all right. So now I've got this uh, 91 micro Henry. Uh, inductor in. Let's uh, see what sort of current this is going to produce. So I'll just pop this down. That's a lot brighter, which it would be. Uh, the current has, kind of predictably, it's halved. It's about 30 milliamps now. Is that going to be good enough? 30 milliamps? I'm not sure how much sun I'm likely to get here in the Isle of Man, so I'm thinking it's, a, it's going in the right direction. But maybe I could do with a slightly higher value inductor to lower the current. But that's a good start. That's going to basically double the amount of time it stays on at night. But if I want, to stay, want it to stay on all night, I'm going to have to find something like maybe 200 uh, micro henrys, maybe. A, a nice intermediate value. Uh, keep in mind that as the uh, current goes down, the LEDs are going to get dimmer. So this is maybe a good start. I might just pop this back outside and, uh, and see how well it does. So yes, uh, modifying lights make them last a bit longer or or be brighter with shorter battery life. Just you can, by changing the inductor value, you can uh, adapt them to whatever your requirements are.